using stats. Took a while to get that going, huh? Yes. Yeah, I mean, St. Joe's is a really good team. They were, I think, second, third, third in preseason all? Yeah. Second? So second. Second. Yeah. Second, they're above us. They're second. They're a hell of a team, and they're just unlucky with some injuries. But they, they're still. If they, if they make a shot like a Danny first half, they're a tough team to beat. Were there any comments of rebounds traffic? I'll say so. I, I didn't want to let St. Joe sweep us. Uh, we want to stay aggressive. We want to win every game we go to. So, yeah, we lost the first game, so like we, we didn't want to let them sweep us. What was the difference this time? Um, I think we finished. I think early on, this, the first game, we started out hot. We got on them. We built the lead. We're up going into halftime. Um, but we weren't able to weather the storm when they were making shots. And they made a lot of shots early on in this game. And then we kept fighting. We kept fighting. We kept fighting. And eventually, they started missing. And we started making shots. And so um, the momentum completely shifted. There was a little spurt there, like. Is that the kind of thing you're waiting on for something to maybe break? Uh, yeah, I think it was after Charlie Brown got his fourth foul. And we, we knew we, we could attack him and really go at him. And I think I think that's when the, we started to make a run. And then the crowd got into it. And I think when the crowd get into it, it's really hard to be as a home. And then defensively. Yes, um, I think that's where it starts for us, though, because we're confident in our in our offensive ability, and we're confident that we can we can score the ball. But um, I think we've had success this year when we've defended the best, and so um, we know that we're going to be able to score down the stretch. But it's about getting stops, and most more importantly, rebounding. And so we're able to, to get stops and get the ball back, and that's huge for us, especially late in the, late down the stretch. I mean, just looking at the stat right here. I see in the first half they're shooting about 40, 42, 45 from three. And the second half it draws down to 15 and 29. So, so like we said, it's, it's just that defense second half that got us going and got us the lead. Do you feel like you guys are getting set up for the stretch run? I guess four or five games left. Yeah, um, I think we're prepared. I, I mean, any game we go into, I think that's that's what the, the coaching staff does a good job of doing for us, um, making sure that we're prepared. And I think we're going to be prepared down the stretch. Um, we were prepared early on in the in the, in the uh, eight ten play, and I think we're going to be prepared down the stretch as well. This is another example of tonight. You guys having balance and you know, Kellen doesn't have a great game, but offensive at least, but you guys. Can I mean, yeah, we got we got six or seven guys that can score the ball, and it wasn't like Kellen was having an off night tonight. He just they were overplaying it every time, so he couldn't get a lot of shots up. But his defensive effort on Brown in the second half was amazing, and just through the whole game. I just want to say too, like Kellen's presence, Luke's presence, John's presence, just them being on the court is a constant threat, and so like. Even if Kel's not going, like the, the defense is always focused on him. The defense is always focused on John. And so it allows for the other guys to get space. And so even when Kel isn't having the best game, like it allows for other guys to have space and it allows for other guys to score like, like you saw tonight. How would you describe the atmosphere? It was amazing. Uh, I mean, I wish it could <laughs> be every game like this. Uh, it would be amazing. but. <laughs> Not a takeaway from the fans. They've been amazing this year. Also, uh, we've been we've been having a lot of sellouts, and yes. I think I think it's just like team, uh, the fans want to see when we're doing well, and I think we're doing really well this year. So, hopefully, just keep it up next game against Dayton, and then against St. Bonaventure too. Does it have anything discussed? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We and that's what we joke about because like the last few times that Steph has came, like. Uh, the crowd has diminished at halftime, you know, it, because he's he's left at half, but he stayed the entire game, and the, the second half was incredible because of it. But, I mean, you guys know, like, what Steph means to Davidson, like, he's done so much for our program. So anytime he comes, like, the fans are going to be crazy, and the fans are going to be there, you know, they want to see him. So it's always awesome to have him back. I think it's also amazing just to see him on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at him when anyone scores, he's going crazy like mm -hmm. like nobody else, like in a fan in his stance. And 
it just shows his care for this program and, and everything he brings to this program is, is amazing. Anything else? Yeah, one question. These uniforms, are going to be, is this going to be a conference? <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we don't know yet. We can't. We can't disclose that information. I think. I think it's going to be a one game. Yeah. But. But. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it doesn't matter. It's just as long as we bring everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm playing with you too. What an incredibly special environment. Um, my goodness. And, and I thought it was a heck of a basketball game. I thought St. Joe's played superb. For them, they'd be beaten 21, 30 points, whatever they lost to St. Bonaventure the other night, and then come back and fight like they did. That's a testament to Phil Martelli, uh, a, a great testament to Phil Martelli. Um, I was thrilled with our guys. You know, we had a dagger stuck in our heart when Funk made that bank shot three at the end of the half. It could have been a one-point game, I thought. Kellen got a great look at it. it. That goes down. They'll never get the time to get the ball up the court like they did. But a long rebound, and he made that bank shot. And um, Our guys didn't hang their head. They're growing up. They're getting, they're getting uh, over the hump of being unfocused. Is that what it was in the second half? I, I thought we came back with uh, uh, playing every minute of every possession as well as they could. Now, they were breakdowns. But it wasn't like we had uh, at Massachusetts, or it wasn't like we had at Fordham, where we went in a little bit of a funk for a two or three minute period. Uh, there's maybe a possession here and a possession there, but our players' maturity and focus in the second half was extraordinary. What um, defensively what did you do there? I, I think I think you know the, what I thought was the was getting Charlie Brown in foul trouble was one, and the second thing was fatigue. I thought we ch made him chase us around a lot. Offensively, we ran a lot of stuff, and uh, I thought they had to chase us, and all of a sudden, their threes are not falling, and maybe their threes weren't falling because they didn't have the energy in their shot like they had in the first half. Give another example of Kellen Hunter's off day, offensively, having guys pick him up. Well, what I thought was, was the, the fact that Luke Frampton got 13 threes, the fact that Keyshawn got six, I give Kellen Grady credit for that because his cuts tonight were as good and as crisp and as sharp. And when he cuts, he draws people with him, and that opens up space. And that's been sort of the bread and butter of our offense, cutting. And you saw he made the one layup, but there were other cuts where he was not rewarded as an individual, but he was rewarded collectively because he opened up space for Keyshawn to get a three or for Luke to get the three. What did you do? We got away from our, um, our, our, our zone. We got away from our full court pressure, and we, we stayed really compact in a man-to-man. A -man. Uh, uh, we did go with five guards at, at times. Uh, we switched a little bit on our ball screen defense. Uh, they're, they're a tough out. I mean, you know, you got how many guys shot threes for them? They, they shot 35 threes, and they've got one, two, three, four guys making two or more. And the other two guys were you know, Jared Bynum and, and Lorenzo Edwards are both very good three-point shooters, as is Anthony Longpray. So they, they stick a, every guy in a court as a three-point shooter. How do you feel setting up in our last quarter of the season? How final, does? The final quarter of the season. How do you feel like this? I, I think we're getting better. I think we've uh, been really tested. We've been challenged. We've been exposed. And I think we've gotten stronger because of it. I think we got a ways to go. The same thing happened to us last year. We went through the similar experience last year, and uh, came March, we were playing our best basketball. Uh, I, I think we're, we're getting to a point where we're getting better every day. What about the atmosphere? Absolutely sensational. I mean, this was as big time an atmosphere as we've ever had here. And um, Stephen Curry and Under Armour, what they did for our players with the uniforms, with the shoes, with the warm-ups, what Under Armour has done for our program, what Stefan has done for our program. I mean, he's, the, he's the signature of our program. And that was in evidence tonight. And we're thrilled that we won this victory, that he was here cheering us on because he was up. I, I could see him out of the corner of my eye on numerous occasions when Luke banked that three shot. And I thought he was going to 
Stefan was going to, you know, high five everyone in the stands. It, it was it was sensational. John Axel and, and, and Keyshawn both said they knew he was there. It was, it was great having his presence. Um, he he's a revered, iconic uh, member of our program, and every one of our players um, sees him as the embodiment of humility, the embodiment of confidence, the embodiment of talent, the embodiment of a great father, a great son, a great brother, a great husband. They, they see all of those hats that he wears and, and they aspire to be that. And he, he has set a gold standard for our players to say, I'm a Davidson basketball player and uh, we've got a guy from our program who has set a standard of excellence that is unmatched. Mm -hmm.